There is a new force driving the world's best Class A trucks. Max Force Big Bore Engines from International. You've already heard some great things about the new Class 8 heavy-duty diesels that we will debut next year. Outstanding fuel economy, excellent performance characteristics, innovative construction that delivers higher strength without added weight, low noise, vibration, and harshness. Recently, we added one more thing, a name that captures the essence of this performance. Max Force International Diesel Power will become the signature brand of International Truck and Engine Corporation's full line of premium on-highway diesels. Beginning in fall of 2007, Max Force Big Bore Engines will be offered exclusively in International Pro Star Line Haul Tractors, International 8600 Regional Haul Tractors, and International 7000 Series Severe Service Trucks. Backed by the International Dealer Service Network, with 900 locations in North America. This brief presentation includes some thought provokers about this breakthrough engine. Hi, I'm Tim Schick, and I'm Director of Marketing for the Max Force 11 and 13 liter big bore diesel engines from International. I'm glad to be here with you today to tell you about some of the outstanding features and characteristics of these engines. You know, you've heard a little, but not a whole lot about the engines up until now, but I can tell you there's been a lot going on. Actually, we started designing these engines in 04, and we had running examples on dynamometer test cells by late 05. And in early 06, we put some of those engines into trucks and have been running them on an internal field test since that time, and they're doing great. The internal field test started last winter, leading up to what will be our first customer field test engines a little later this year. And then finally in January of 07, we'll start what we call a pre-production run, or we sometimes may refer to these as market seed engines, all of which adds up to a very rigorous testing program for this engine because we want to make sure that not only do we know exactly what these engines are going to do, but our customers have had a chance to see for themselves in their own applications compared to the engines they're running today what they're going to do. You know, you just heard me say we were capable of production engines in early 07. Why are we waiting until fall to do that? Really, it leads right back to the program I was just talking about. It's very important to us, and we believe it's going to be exceedingly important to customers to know that we have two full summers and two full winters of on-road testing in the hands of real customers in real applications in different parts of the country behind us by the time we go into production. So we won't get into the characteristic, well, I'll have to wait a little while till I see how the engine's going to do because we'll know how it's going to do. All of us will know. We'll know from internal tests, customers will know from our external field test and our pre-production engine program exactly what this engine will do and it'll do a lot. In order to take you through all of the capabilities, I'm gonna start with the most basic element of the engine itself the cylinder block, and you'll notice when you look at the cylinder block, the first thing that jumps out at you are the pronounced ribs on the side, and those are a little bit different probably than anything you've seen on a block before, but your immediate conclusion when you look at them is they must be there for added strength. And I'll tell you, that's the first surprise about this engine because those ribs have nothing to do with added strength in the cylinder block. Actually, the block doesn't need any additional strength at all because it's made out of a material called compacted graphite iron, or CG iron. Now, CG iron isn't new. It was patented over 50 years ago, but it is new in volume production, and it's also new for heavy-duty big-bore diesels. Compacted graphite iron is 40% stiffer, 75% stronger and has twice the fatigue resistance as conventional gray iron. And of course, conventional gray iron is what all diesel engines up until now have been made of. Compacted graphite iron has never been used in a big bore diesel in North America, but it's not new. It's been around for 50 years or so. And the way you make compacted graphite iron is you add magnesium to conventional gray iron. So it's kind of a step in the process. It's just an extra step. And the reason you haven't seen much of it up until now, other than exotic engines and racing applications, and that's where it has been used, but it couldn't be made really in high volume production because the amount of magnesium required to make CG iron varies with the temperature and the pressure and the humidity of the ambient surroundings when you're pouring the iron. It wasn't until computer programs were developed 
to keep track of all these variables within the foundry that we were able to pour compacted graphite iron in large quantities. So that's available now. Also, the machine tool industry has kept pace with this very, very hard material. And now with advances in the machine tool industry, you're able to machine large scale production of high volume compacted graphite iron. So it truly does add a, an outstanding level of strength to the basic element of the engine block without adding extra weight. Now, what are the ribs for? Actually, to provide the answer to that, I'm going to have to start with the other side of the engine, and I'm pointing here to the high-pressure common rail fuel system. The high-pressure common rail fuel system is also not new. Actually, there are millions and millions of these systems running in Europe today. There's even a million of them running in North America today, but this is the first application in a heavy-duty diesel engine. What are the outstanding characteristics of this system and why did we bring it to this engine? First of all, the system is totally programmable so that it can deliver peak pressure at any RPM. And of course, you want very high pressure at low RPM in a diesel engine so that you can combust more of the fuel, the higher the pressure, the more complete the combustion. You also can make a lot of power by introducing this high pressure fuel at low RPM. In addition to the peak pressure at low RPM, the system can break up or sequence the injection events so that it's more than just one big major injection which does really two things that you don't want. A, a large major single injection produces emissions because you're burning a big slug of fuel all at once, or I should say trying to. It won't all burn, so you get particulate emissions. You also get a temperature spike that yields high oxides of nitrogen, or NOx. So in sequencing the fuel into the engine, you reduce, virtually eliminate, these two major emissions constituents from the combustion event itself. In addition, because you're burning the fuel more completely, you're getting higher fuel economy. And then finally, remember I said that this fuel goes in at uh, peak pressure at very low speeds. Because you're able to operate the engine now at lower speeds and you're able to develop peak power at those low speeds, you don't have to go up into the higher ends of the RPM range where fuel economy is inherently not as good as in the lower range. So we start with an excellent fuel system that provides great fuel economy, low emissions, and one more thing, this is also a very low noise fuel system. So how can a fuel system be low noise? What uh, the characteristic of this fuel system in sequencing the combustion events, remember I said you don't get one big slug of fuel, you get staged or uh, sequenced injection. You don't also get the characteristic diesel clatter. So the combustion noise itself is minimized by the staged injection that this fuel system delivers. Another big element is the twin turbocharger system. Notice I said twin because there are two turbos on this engine. There's a very small turbo that provides immediate wind up from low speeds and that gives you almost instantaneous acceleration and responsiveness when you're leaving the red light or increased speed around corners. It provides instant response and very, very high torque at low speeds. So remember how that works in tandem with the fuel system. The fuel system is able to inject fuel at very low speed, very high pressure. Now we have an air system on the engine that can also provide peak performance at low speed. There's a second turbo that's much, much larger than the low-speed turbo that provides peak horsepower at high speed. So you have the small turbo that gets you away from the red lights, and you have the large turbo that keeps you rolling at high speed up the hills and across uh, high-speed uh, flat areas where the aerodynamic load really comes into play. So the combination of these two turbos provides outstanding response and outstanding stay-in power for this engine. One other item that uh, is a little bit novel on this engine is the two turbos have an interstage cooler. The interstage cooler cools the air as it comes out of the first turbo before it goes into the second. Remember, cooler air is more dense so that we can pack more air into that second turbo, again, to provide plenty of what the engineers call high mass flow for the second turbo so that you can achieve and maintain high road speeds uh, going up hills or in areas where you have a high aerodynamic load at high speed on the turnpikes and freeways. And you heard me say just a minute ago that this is a low-speed engine, capable of peak power at very low engine speeds, but yet 